All right, our last lesson in our selection tools unit is going to be on the pen tool. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. People who are really great graphic designers are amazing with the pen tool. And I'm not particularly amazing with the pen tool, although I do use it a lot in logo creation, but I don't use a lot in Photoshop. Uh, just because I think a lot of the selection tools do the work for me, so I just don't need to. But I am going to introduce it to you just so that you have some connection to the pen tool other than um, just how to draw a shape with the pen tool. So we've used the pen tool in the past over here to draw shapes. And those shapes, of course, could be, you know, triangles or whatever. And they have a fill and they have a stroke. Okay, I'm going to delete that. So, um, but what you would use the pen tool for with regards to selections would be to create what's called a path. So notice it says path up there instead of shape. A path is just something that you can see and then you can use for a vector mask. Now we've been putting layer masks on things all the way through this, but those are what we would consider raster masks. And in photo P, they call them raster masks. Well, a vector mask is one that is basically mathematical, that's, that's basically paths and lines. Um, so for something with defined edges like this helicopter, it might be a good tool. Of course, I'm usually good with all the other tools, so I don't necessarily feel like I need it, but let's try. So to use the pin, you just click to start and it puts down a point. Now, not, not like the polygon lasso, we don't see little rubber bands everywhere but we can click to put down the next point. In PhotoP, they call them knobs. Uh, I'm not sure why knobs, I call them anchor points. Um, but anyway, and it connects from one dot to the next dot. And it just connects in a straight path. So for these that are just straight, it's pretty simple because you just draw it and it connects and it's straight, although that wasn't the greatest click up there. Um, and then when we're dealing with curves, that's what the pen tool can do that the polygon cannot do. So I can go from here to here and that part's fine, but now I need to go from here over this hump. So to do that, I'm gonna click and not let go and drag. We talked about this a little bit when we did the pen tool uh, earlier. And then now I'm gonna switch this so it can go up. So I'm gonna hold down Alt to make this handle point that direction. I need it to go the direction that the propeller blade is gonna, or whatever that thing is called, is gonna go, okay, from this point. And then I can continue on. And I'm gonna use my hand tool to scoot this over, and then I'll continue on here. So I would go here. If you mess up, you can't hit backspace, I don't think, like you can with the polygon tool. You can control Z and back up one. Um, but anyway, so then you just continue on. A lot of times, like I said, it's going to be reminiscent of your polygon lasso, except these points are going to be editable after we're done. All right, so this is kind of hard to grab a hold of here, but I'm clicking and dragging, um, and then i got to go back up to get that other side, so I'm going to hold Alt and turn this so it curves back this way, and then i got to make this one go. Okay, and it's kind of going the right way, so we should be... Eh, not the greatest, it's okay. You can see I'd just soon rather use other tools, but there are people who do those speed art or speed Photoshop videos, and they're like really, really good at it, and I'm just not as good. Okay, let's pretend that I'm done. I'm not gonna work all the way through here. I'm just gonna close this back up, so let me take my hand tool. <laughs> this is gonna be really bad on the back end here, but. All right, so I've got my path, right? If you go to the paths panel, you can see the work path here. But I've got my path. The cool thing about paths is they are still editable. So unlike the polygon lasso, which would be done, with a pen tool, we can switch to the direct selection tool. And then we can come and click, and I probably should zoom up here. We can come and click on specific parts of the path, and we can pick them up and scoot them, or we can adjust those handles. So for people who are really good at this tool, like they like that because they can just pop back in here and they can edit these things. And remember if they're moving together and I want them to not move together, I'm going to hold alt and pull from this other one to disconnect those little handles so they're not touching each other anymore. Okay, so you just move them around and so forth. And there's, you know, like I say, there's sort of a trick to it. You can go back to using the various pen tool options, 
Um, there's curvature pin, anchor pad, add anchors, and delete anchor. So if I need another point here, like this needs to go out and then down, I chose my pin with the add anchor point. And then I can come in here and click on this point somewhere. And then go back to that direct selection arrow. And then I can start moving these out here to where it fits better. Same thing, if I need to convert a point, um, you can click on a point and hold Alt. Oops, I just duplicated, so let's undo that. Um, in Photo P, you click on the point and hold Alt to modify those. Okay, let's, there we go. All right, anyway, you kind of get the gist of it. Now, in Photoshop, what you could do, and you can do this in both programs, but basically we can turn this into a mask. So if I go back to my pen tool um, up here at the top, I have the option to turn this into a mask, okay? So when I click that, it adds a mask and it hides everything else, but I can still edit this mask. So with that direct selection arrow, I can still come in here and edit this mask. And as I edit the mask, it will show or hide more of the actual selection, okay? And you could add in points. I take my plus one and add more points in here if I wanted to. You can also right click this mask and turn it into a rasterized mask, which would be in, then be the kind of mask that we can paint in black or white on, okay? So you could leave it in this nice crisp path, or you can right click it and rasterize this vector mask. Now, I don't think you can rasterize a vector mask in Photop, but you can create one. So let's pop over to Photop. Let's look at this one. We'll look at the airplane. So same thing, I can take my pen tool and I can tell it I'm making a path and not a shape. And then I can start somewhere by clicking and then clicking again and then clicking down here. And if I click, and drag but don't let go whenever I click that point, then I can start to create that curve. And then I can go here and pull up or down or whatever I need to. Now, I need to go this way and my curve is pointing down, so the Alt thing doesn't work. Like, see, I just pressed Alt, that did not work in here. So I'm gonna Control Z to back up. And instead, on, on Photo P, you have to click on the point. So instead of clicking on the handle, you click on the point with the Alt key. And it's like it disconnects it, I guess. So now whatever direction you go, it's like fine with. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's just kind of how I'm <laughs> explaining it, right? So like here, this is going to go over here somewhere. So I'm going to hold down Alt and click on this point. And now I can go whatever direction I want to go, which is over here. Oops. Okay. And then you would just continue on. And again, I can still go back in later and edit all this, right? So I'm holding down Alt here, and then I would go to this one, come over to the other side of the little hoop, go here, hold down Alt, because it's going the wrong direction, go straight, go straight. This is one of those things, <laughs> I used to make my poor Photoshop kids take a long time to practice with this pen tool, but even when we did, everybody kind of just went back to old tools anyway. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one up, because it just takes a long time. Uh, and then, like I said, with the other tool, we can click and hold and go to that direct selection tool. And then again, we can still pop in here and adjust these guys. So we can come in. I can still hold Alt and click on this point if I need to, um, to click on a point and move it in or whatever. And like I said, it's just not as intuitive as Photoshop. Um, I don't like that I can't seem to... Um, pull my handles independently like I can in Photoshop. But you know, it exists, so just be aware of it. Um, the main reason people use paths is because they are vector, V-E-C-T-O-R, they are vector. Um, and a vector path is crisp and clear. Whereas raster paths or raster masks are based on pixels, which is why you paint on them. So just be aware that that is a way to do it. In here, once you get your selection, um, we can create a vector mask. We have to go up here to layer, vector mask, and then take that current path and it turns it into the mask. And so just like in Photoshop, everything disappears except what's in the mask. Um, just like everything else, we could change the density in the mask and look at our properties panel and, and, and see everything and continue to work on it by adding in additional spots. So I could still come in and edit my path 
I have to click on the mask to access the path. I can still come over here um, and utilize my pen. It just works a little bit different um, in this program because their pen tool doesn't have an add and subtract and all of that like the other one does. So you have to hold down the Alt key to add in additional points. You can see it's just not, yeah, it's just not as intuitive. So not a big fan of the pen tool in Photopea, but it is pretty good in Photoshop. Um, and if you are going to go into graphic design, you do need to get good with the pen tool. Um, but Photoshop is not one of those that it's absolutely essential. So I hope that gives you kind of a brief introduction to the pen tool and how it works. Just remember, we use the pen tool, set on path, and then once we get our selection, we can click mask to create a vector mask instead of a rec raster mask. That raster masks are the kind that you paint on and vector masks contain paths.